All right, so today we're going to be playing um, some interactive fiction here. More specifically, a Cthulhu Lovecraftian adventure novel called Anchorhead. Uh, and basically, interactive fiction is a mix between video games and literature, right? It's a written story, but you still get to make decisions. So let's get right into it here, shall we? Um, November 1997. Take a deep breath of salty air as the first raindrop raindrops begin to spatter the pavement. In the swollen, slate-covered, slate-colored clouds that blanket the sky mutter ominous potence amongst themselves of the little coastal town of Anchorhead. Squinting up into the glowering storm, you wonder how everything managed to happen so fast. A strange phone call over a month ago from a lawyer claiming to represent the estate of some distant branch of Michael's family was bewildering enough in itself, for the sudden whirlwind of planning and decisions, legal details and travel arrangements, the packing up and shipping away of your entire home, your entire life. Now suddenly here you are, after driving for the past two days straight, over a thousand miles away from the familiar warmth of Texas, getting ready to move into the ancestral mansion of a clan of relatives so far removed that not even Michael has ever heard of them. We've only been married since June, and none of this was any of your idea in the first place. And already it's starting to rain. These days, you often find yourself feeling confused and uprooted. You shake yourself and force the melancholy thoughts from your head, trying to focus on the errand at hand. You're to meet with a real estate agent and pick the key keys up to your new house while Michael runs across town to take care of some paperwork at the university. He'll be back to pick you up in a few minutes. And then the two of you can begin the long, precarious process of settling in. Sullen belch emanates from the clouds, and the rain starts coming down harder, fat, cold drops smacking loudly against the cobblestones. Shouldn't it be snowing in New England at this time of year? With a sigh, you open your umbrella. Welcome to Anchorhead. I was far from home, and the spell of the eastern sea was up upon me. It's very fitting. Day one, outside the real estate office. Anchorhead is an interactive gothic by Michael S. Gentry. A grim little cul-de-sac, tucked away in a corner of the claustrophobic tangle of narrow, twisting avenues that largely constitute the older portion of Anchorhead. Like most of the streets in the city, it is ancient, shadowy, and leads essentially nowhere. Lane ends here at the real estate agent's office, which lies to the east and winds its way back toward the center of town to the west. A narrow, garbage-choked alley opens to the southeast. Mm. So, examine office. The door has a glass front with the name of the real estate company, Benson and Brackhurst, stenciled across it. The blinds are drawn, the lights are off inside, and no one appears to be home. Odd, since the, since the agent knew you were coming today. <laughs> Overhead, the swollen clouds flicker ominously with a greenish haze of sheet lightning. Mm. So the door is a glass front. Knock on door. You rap on the glass sharply, peering through it into the dark room inside. Nobody answers. Strange. You just talked to the real estate agent, Miss Benson, you think it was yesterday. He was going to meet you here. So, look through glass. Cupping your hands around your eyes and peering in, you can make out dim shadows in an empty office. In the distance, you can hear the lonesome keening of a train whistle train whistle drifting on the wind. So no one there. Look for doorbell. Mm, you'll have to specify where you want to look. Um. Do we have like a mobile phone maybe? Examine self. You look good, considering. A bit rattled by recent events, perhaps, but well poised and collected all the same. Inventory. You're wearing your wedding ring, your trench coat and your clothes. 
Um, in addition, you have your hand, you have in your hand your umbrella. The pockets of your trench coat are empty. So just umbrella, wedding ring, trench coat, clothes. Outside the real estate office. Mm. I think X is short for examine. So we'll just examine the LA. The LA lies southeast and appears to lead around the side of the real estate office. Maybe I want to go there. I don't want to go to the center of town right now, right? Mm, so SE, short for southeast. LA. This narrow aperture between two buildings is nearly blocked with piles of rotting cardboard boxes and overstuffed garbage cans. Ugly, half-crumbling brick walls to either side totter oppressively over you. The LA ends here at a tall wooden fence. High up on the wall of the northern building, there's a narrow, transom-style window. Clouds overhead mutter restlessly to themselves. Examine window. Uh, it's about 18 inches wide and a foot tall, with hinges along the top that allow allow it to swing out. It's currently closed. Open window. Window is too high. The window is too damn high. Hmm. There is like boxes here, but just cardboard boxes, overstuffed garbage cans. Examine walls. It's just an ordinary looking wall. Examine trash. The metal garbage cans are stuffed to overflowing with slowly decomposing refuse. Climb garbage cans. You clamber onto the wobbling garbage can, precariously balanced. Open window. Hmm. You still can't quite reach, because the garbage can is too far away from the wall. Perhaps if you could push it closer. Yeah, we can do that. Um, so... Uh, how do you spell that? Descent. Descent. Get off. Climb down. Probably. Carefully, you descend. Um... Push garbage can next to window. Does will it understand that? Hmm. Yeah. Push garbage can. To push the garbage ca garbage cans around aimlessly. Thanks, game. How do I word this then? Uh, push garbage can closer to the sky. That would accomplish very little. Push garbage can closer to the window. Grunting and holding your breath, you manhandle one of the filthy cans under the window. Climb garbage can open window. Um, precariously balanced, you can just reach the low edge of the window from here. You open the transom window. Look inside. Look inside the sky. The sky is an unbroken blanket of seeding grey clouds in every direction. Look inside the window. Peering in through the foggy... But the window's open, isn't it? Peering in through the foggy glass, you can see what looks like a file room. Mm. Climb into window. Closing the umbrella first. It's a tight squeeze, but you just manage to wriggle through, dropping quietly to the floor inside. File room. 
Peering through the murk, you can make out the blocky outlines of filing cabinets lining the walls and a doorway to the west. A window high up on the south wall lets you lets in a very faint illumination. Is that the window we just came in through? You can make out the blocky outlines of filing cabinets. Doorway to the west. I mean, I don't want to go through the files quite yet, do I? Mm. So I'll just go west, I think. Oh, I mean... Office. Pallid grey light trickles in through the drawn blinds. The office is deserted. Paper still scattered across the top of the desk. The front door lies west and the file room lies east. Sitting on the corner of the paper strewn desk are a telephone and an answering machine. Someone seems to have left a cup of coffee sitting out, half finished and cold. the desk is littered with paperwork, notes, messages, files, etc. The way most desks tend to be at the end of a busy day. Telephone sits at one corner next to a digital answering machine. There is a small drawer to one side. Examine notes. Sifting through the paperwork, you find nothing that catches your attention. Is that different? Which do you mean, the papers or the answering machine? Okay. This answering machine. Simple answering machine with a small display indicating messages received. A button labeled play and a button labeled delete. Play. Stop fooling around. Nice. <laughs> nice game. Um. Play messages on answering machine. Can't see anything. Okay, so X messages answering machine. Press play button. For a while there's nothing but a quiet hiss, followed by intermittent skulls of orange soundings of strange sound sounding static. It sounds like one of those annoying glitches where the caller hangs up but the machine keeps recording anyway. Then, barely audible through the static, you detect what sounds like a human voice whis whispering a single word. Verlak. The machine beeps. A brief shudder ripples up your back. You remember now, Verlak is the name of this branch of Michael's family. Um. Also, the rain noise should be more like this now. Because we're inside, right? Okay. Um. Verla. What do I do? Should I delete it? Press delete. Button. The machine beeps. You can hear a fly buzzing around somewhere in the next room. Press play button to make sure it's deleted. The machine beeps and does nothing. Right.
there was a drawer. Open drawer. Seems locked. Force door. Okay. So we look through the papers. We start to dial out, but we can't get anything but a busy signal, no matter how much you jiggle the receiver. Frustrated? You hang up. Okay. I mean, that's all there is here, right? Open blinds. The port seems to be jammed, but the blinds won't open. Mm. Turn the light on. This is like such a thing. coffee. First taking the styrofoam cup. You take one sip and nearly gag. Awful stuff. You have it now. Take coffee. You only get your fingers wet. Take coffee cup. Examine up. Mm. Is there something written under it or something maybe? Take cup. You already have that? Really? Oh, I have the cup in my hands. I can't put cup into <laughs> pocket. I don't know why, but maybe. Okay, put cup down, drop it. Okay, so I guess I'll go... Go into file room. Was that east? Right. Hmm, it's cabinets. There must be hundreds of files there, here, too many to browse through. You'll have to look up something specific if you want to find anything. Oh, that's right. Oh, what was that? I should have written that down. Verlac. Look up Verlac. Aha! In the filing cabinet. Strange, the file in the Verlac property has been cleaned out. Title, deed, all the papers, all of it gone. There is, however, a set of keys tucked down in the hanging folder. You quickly pocket them. Your score has just gone up by two points. Lovely. So those are the house keys, I guess, right? Mm, also, I should make a document. Next document. Anchor head. Um, Verlack. Um, name of branch of my girl's family who own the mansion. Should write down a couple of things, maybe. I don't know, what's our name? I don't know. Michael? Michael? Aspando. 
or is this recognized tabs? Yeah. Anything else we need to write down? Not yet, I think. Um, also, I made this beautiful map earlier on. Because um, I did play for like 20 minutes before, but I didn't record. We didn't get into this office before, though, so this is all new for me. We went to a narrow beach, though. This is where... Um, you get if you don't... you don't uh, go into the office but rather further on. If you want to do that, maybe yeah, there's a fence here and then there's a narrow alley. Um, and this is basically the coast which is very rocky. There's a narrow beach and uh, this is the sea. We're on the east coast of course. So this is our beautiful map. So now I'll go west. And then I think I'll go west again. It seems to be locked. So do I have to climb out again? Really? I can't even open it from the inside. I mean, there still is this drawer. Oh, maybe I can open the drawer with my keys. Um, examine keys. It's just an ordinary looking key ring. There are two keys. The key to the house and a key to the cellar on it. Okay. Examine drawer. Um, locked drawer. Go through all the keys on your key ring, trying each one in turn, but none of them seems to fit. Okay. Unlock front door. You unlock the office door. Ow! Maybe it's just you can unlock it without a key, it just has a... Okay. Well, I guess. So I guess now I can go west, right? Yeah, okay. The office door is open. Close office door. Lock office door? I can't probably do that from the outside, right? <laughs> Optimistic of you. Lock office door with key. Key to the house. Okay. Yeah, they, they don't work. I, I guess I'll have to leave it open then. I mean, I could have left through the window again, maybe. Because now leaving the door open means people can get in, of course. Do I care, though? I don't think so. Um, so I'll go into the alley again. Oh, should I move the garbage can away again? Take four. That's hard and portable. Okay. Remove board. You're not wearing that. Okay. Um, squeeze through fence. Closing the umbrella first. Drop into your hands and knees. You wriggle underneath the loose board and scramble down a muddy slope. Narrow beach. This narrow strip of beach is tucked away between the two outcroppings and the predominantly rocky shoreline. Accessible only from a steep, muddy slope to the west. The sand is filthy and strewn with rocks, seaweed, litter, and other bits of storm-tossed detritus. 
near the bottom of this hill, the sewer trout from the pipe juts out over the beach, about three feet above the ground. A thin stream of acrid smelling sewer water trickles out over the lip of the pipe. Forming a puddle in the sand, you are getting wet. Open an umbrella. And this is what I said earlier, right? This is our map here. Little beach. This is a little fence we came through. And there's an alleyway um, that led southeast. So this away, let's say. Narrow alley with a lot of trash. Um, going west, exited the window. Uh, the the building. So I guess the building would have would be like here, right? So this is the office. This is the file room. Oh wait, no. I mean, yeah, something like this, right? Because uh, there was a window in the file room. But then... Say file room is here. Oh god. And the office is here. And the path moves like this way that is still more or less southeast. This is the office door. This is the file room door. This is the window. Um, should I label these? I don't know if that's important. Maybe. I'm gonna put that 8 aerial file room. This is the office. RE real estate office. Mm. Okay. Now we're at the beach. Mm. So we want to ex examine the pipe. The concrete pipe is about a foot and a half in diameter. Looking in, you can only see three feet before the inner walls of the pipe disappear into blackness. Overhead, the swollen clouds flicker ominously with a greenish haze of lightning. Um, ex -paddle. The water coming from the pipe is, pipe is pulse smelling and brown. Ex detritus on the beach. There's nothing of any worth or interest here, it just drifts in trash. Another wave crashes against the rock, sending a cloud of cloud spray into the, into the air. Also... Right. We're in the sea now. Um... See is the color of old pewter, surging and chopping restlessly beneath the flowers. The sky is an unbroken blanket of seething gray clouds in every direction. Mm. Shoreline. You needn't worry about that. The steep rocky outcroppings extend into the water on either side of the narrow beach. Nothing of any worth or interest here. 
Okay then, I guess. We'll go back. Okay. Um, so we'll go east of the sea, south. The rocky outcroppings block the path. Path to the north and south. You can only leave up the slope to the west. LA. Um, open umbrella. Garbage can away from wall. Eh, okay. I don't I don't think it'll let us. Um Right. If I go further west. Can only exit the LA to the northwest or crawl through the loose board to the east. So northwest. So we're outside the real estate office again. Which lies to the east and winds its way back to the center of town to the west. A narrow garbage choke LA opens to the southwest, southeast. So I think we want to go west, right? To the center of town. A narrow street. Um, as the lane winds along from east to west, it narrows until the steep, jagged rooftops on either side of the street practically touch each other. To the south, a side street leads across Waitley Bridge. Also, we are moving away from the coast again. Um, across Waitley Bridge toward the center of town, and a twisting lane ends up Leads up a hill to the northwest. Short flight of steps to the north leads down to the local watering hole. Mm. So we're in the narrow street. Um, east is the real estate office. South. Center of town. Twisting lane. Okay, let's look at our beautiful little map again, shall we? Right, so this is the real estate office, and then this lane leads west towards the center of town. Um, what am I doing for... Oh, I still have enough space. That's okay. Cool. So now where we are, the lane leads east and west, but there's also um, south, way south to the center of town. Cross Waitley Bridge, so um, how do I even mark a bridge? I have no idea. And bridge probably indicates there's like water underneath, right? So I'll like mark a little river here or whatever. I don't know its exact trajectory, but this is just it. Er, er, er. Hmm. A twisting lane leads up a hill to the northwest. So, can't go north, but northwest. It's like a twisting lane up a hill. And then there's west, of course. Um, okay. Makes sense, I guess.
what did it say about the local watering hole? Short flight of steps to the north. Oh, there is actually. Okay, never mind. So there's northwest, little winding alley, west, the street, and then short flight of steps to the north, the tavern. I think I'm gonna go to the tavern. Local pub. So what we want is this one again. This will go inside. And I think this one. Local pub, a dank, drafty old drinking hall lit by flickering, oil-burning lanterns. Smoke collects in greasy pools along, among the rafters, and shadows crowd thick around. The bar runs the length of the room to your right, or the south, or to the south, a low doorway opens up to the street. Mill workers and fishermen occupy a few of the tables, drinking beer or puffing grimly along stemmed pipes. Each is wrapped in his solitude, soaking up the general miasma of dreary fatalism. The lanterns sitting on the table nearest you sputters fitfully, throwing distorted shadows across the wall. So I guess people aren't really talking that much. Um. Needn't worry about that. Okay. The dark and dark expanse of wood, pitted and scarred and stained with the rings from over a hundred years worth of slopping the amounts. I guess. The patrons of this place are taciturn and grim. No one speaks. No one looks anyone in the eye. No one, in fact, even looks up from his beer. A heavy aura of resignation, and it almost seems dread, hangs palpably over the whole crowd. About the Verlek family. Oh, I just assumed that. That's okay. Suddenly, although you wouldn't have thought it possible, the pub becomes even more icily silent. Even the lantern flames seem to pause their flickering. The nearest of the local turns toward you, squinting through eyes like black glass embedded in his ancient leathery skin. His lips barely seem to move between his salt encrusted beard. Some things are best left alone by outsiders, madam, he rasps. Some things best left alone by decent folk altogether. Back in one of the dark in, back in one of the darker corners, someone spits deliberately on the floor. And then all eyes are back on their beer. It's as if you didn't exist at all. Talk to patrons about Angkor Head. 
no one answers you or even looks your way. Look for bartender <laughs> behind the bar. Talk to bartender. You can't see any such thing. Okay. Order a beer. What? Buy a beer. Regrettably impossible. You left both your purse and your wallet in the car. You're loving this town more every minute. Go to car. Oh, where's my car then? Think about... Can I think about stuff? Pause momentarily lost in thought. It doesn't give us anything though. So there ain't much here, right? Look around. old-fashioned hurricane lamp. That could be useful. The tall glass chimney to protect it from the wind. The cotton wick burns fitfully in its reservoir of cheap oil. Can I just take it? No one here looks as though they'd mind if you borrowed one of these lamps. Casually, you purloin the nearest one. your hands a lantern providing light, a key ring on which are two keys and your umbrella. Put keys into your pocket. Yeah, I don't want to... I mean, I only have so many hands, right? Mm, so I guess we'll, we'll leave, right? Oh, as you make your way to the door, your foot strikes something under one of the tables. Uh, look down. What? Examine tables. Examine foot. Hmm. Um. Examine something? Examine thing on the table? Mm, sometimes game. I don't know how to word what you want from me. Look around. So of course I want to know what I struck with my foot. But how do I find that out? Examine what your foot struck. Okay says that again, because it's still there. Pick it up. That's hardly portable. Mm. Look under the tables. Some forgetful soul has left a flask underneath one of the tables, pushed into a shadowy corner. 
examine flask. The label is faded and mostly peeled away, but what little you can make out seems to indicate that this is not a particularly distinguished brand of spirits. The words bootleg and rotgut come to mind, probably because they're the only words legible on what's left of the label. Take flask. Taken. Open flask. You open the flask, revealing about three swallows worth of cheap whiskey. Drink. Whiskey. You take a tiny sip, then shudder as the liquid sears down your esophagus, es esophagus and settles greasily in your stomach. So vile, you'd hesitate to even pour the stuff down your sink. Close flask. Put flask into pocket. Slip the flask into the pocket of your trench coat. Yeah, we're acquiring items, guys. So now I want to go south again, and we're back in the narrow street. As you might remember, so this is the pub. Um, text. Oh. Pub. Whitely Bridge. Let's try and put that here. Whitely Bridge. Um. Here, fence. Could ride fence with loose board, but think that'd be too much. That's the fence. All right, so where do I want to go next? So in the narrow street, as the lane winds along from east to west, it narrows until the steep, jagged rooftops on either side of the street practically touch each other. The south side street leads across Waitley Bridge toward the center of town, and a twisting lane ends up a hill to the northwest. A short flight of steps to the north leads down to the local watering hall. So yeah, I was in the watering hall, I was down east, um, let's look around a bit. Crumbling buildings of Anchor Hat with their ubiquitous peaked rooftops and ancient leaning gables cluster thickly around you in every direction. Hey XCS, how's it going? I am playing an interactive fiction game slash novel called Anchor Hat. Um, it's basically, if you've ever played Choose Your Own Adventure books or... Um, like fantasy game books. It's a mixture between literature and video games in that it's a written story without graphics or many sounds or whatever, but you still get to make your own decisions. Um, it's basically like Sork, if you've ever played that. That's like a game from the 80s, a text adventure. And this is like a bit of a Cthulhu-esque horror story, I think. And the general gist of it is that we've just um, moved with our husband to a um, 
to a town in New England from Texas because we inherited an old mansion here. Sounds fun. Yeah, cool. I'm glad to have you. And please feel free to uh, help me with uh, figuring stuff out or to make suggestions for what to do or whatever. Um, I'll be glad to do this together. So we're in this town of Anchorhead, and what we just did is we went to the real estate's office to pick up the keys to that mansion that we inherited. But the real estate wasn't there, so we snuck in through a window, got the keys, and now we're basically in the middle of town. And we're supposed to meet our husband later on, um, but I don't know exactly where, so we're just looking looking around the town a little bit. And it's very rainy, as you can, as you can tell. Um... But we're outside again. Right, so. Um, so we were in the pub already. What did I want to say? I mean, I feel like I want to go um, up the twisting lane. So northwest, say. Twisting lane. Lane narrows here to little more than a badly cobbled sidewalk as it wends its way up through a series of tortuous bends and switchbacks. In some places, the street is so steep that steps have been cut into it, worn down over the years and slick with moss. Your progress is blocked at the top of the street by a blank brick wall. Clouds overhead mutter restlessly to themselves. Hmm. So X is short for examine. This much I already found out, so X wall. Let me ask you a question. Just an ordinary looking brick wall. Any way around the wall? Yeah, maybe. Um, um, walk around the wall. You're close enough already. Sometimes it's also a way of figuring out how to pass or word things so the game will accept them, right? But generally the the AI is pretty good with that. Walk around the wall, climb over wall. Wall is featureless and very high. There's no way over it. Mm, yeah, I think we, we probably can't do anything here. So I'll go back southeast, I think. Punch the wall. <laughs> Punch, wall. Violence isn't the answer to this one. And also, just so that you're aware, we do have some things in our inventory. So we're wearing our wedding ring, trench coat, and our clothes. In addition, we have in our hands a lantern and an umbrella. The pockets of our trench coat contain a flask, which is closed, and a keyring, on which are two keys a key to the house and a key to the cellar. Um. I think I'll go back. A shame, yeah. Oh. You take a few tentative steps back down the lane, but it seems to lead only to a sh short switchback, bringing you right back to the brick wall. You're not entirely sure now which direction leads, leads back to the narrow street. Well, great. What? Now we've lost, lost our way. Look around. The lane narrows here to little more than a badly cobbled sidewalk as it wends, wends its way up through a series of torches, bends, and switchbacks. Yeah, we've had that before. Hmm. We're lost in a simple street. Yeah. Um, look at ground. The cobblestones are slick from the rain and worn with many centuries passage. Look at sky. Guys, an unbroken blanket of seething gray clouds in every direction. Up. In that direction, there's only the sky. Down. Can't get mu much lower than the ground. Yeah, I was wondering, how could we be lost here? Because it said the little alley, like, goes upwards. So we just need to go down to get back, I guess. Okay, this is kind of weird. So, what else is there that we could uh, could look at? Narrows here to a little more than a badly cobbled sidewalk. Mm.
Let's try all the directions. The wall blocks your way in that direction. A sudden gust of wind blows a cold spray of rain in your face. South. Yeah. East. West. Okay. We're lost. Examine the wall again. Examine wall. Just an ordinary looking brick wall. Bang your head on wall. That's not a verb I recognize. Okay. Uh, what? This is kind of kind of funny. Also, you guys, I have painted this wonderful map of my exploits so far. So um, we're basically at the east coast, right? So there's the sea here. There's a narrow beach here. This is the real estate office and the file room we were in earlier. This is where we in the, the narrow street and the pub to the north where we were in earlier. And this is like the little beautiful uh, winding lane that we're lost in right now so what so north is a wall okay so whoop whoop there's a wall okay um, so we just have to go southeast actually but somehow that doesn't work But it seems to lead only to a short switch back. Uh, okay. So I do have a lantern and some whiskey in a flask some keys go back to narrow street I'll see such, such a thing okay go back mm. Shouting at things. Shout for help. Shout. Come now, you're not that frightened. Okay. Is anybody out there? <laughs> look up the wall at bricks what I mean so far this game hasn't been so lame this is kind of lame I don't know what to do So I needed to go southwest. All right, that's it. Well, whatever. So we're back in the narrow street. So there's nothing in this direction, as we found out. Just a wall. Um, we have been to the pub. We've been here. So we can either go towards um, the center of town down Wakely Bridge, or just go further west. I think I'm going to go further west first. Um, junction. To the north, a gap in the crowded press of gloomy buildings opens onto a country lane heading out, out over a grassy heath. The main street continues to the east, but to the northwest, over the top of a steep rise, you can just make out the vault rooftops of the university. Oh, that's right, it's said our husband is at university doing some paperwork before he meets up with us. Okay, cool. Now. my beautiful little painting here so yeah let's just assume this goes on for a little bit so the northwest that's the university okay north is a country lane um, Put that 
the uh, uh, country lane. See ya, XCS. See you later. Thanks for stopping by. Um, Main Street continues to the east. Yeah, that's where we came from. And then to the northwest is the university somewhere. Do I want to go to the university yet, or out into the countryside, maybe? No, I'll go to the uni. University Court. Isolated and serene, with its high ivy-colored walls, Miskaton University represents, represents this benighted town's single, if somewhat dubious, claim to cultural achievement. Founded sometime in the early 1800s, the school's reputation and enrollment have diminished somewhat as Anchor had drifts further and further into the abyss of provincial backwaterism. Still, it is generally recognized for its collection of folklore and esoteric mythology, one of the oldest and most extensive on the East Coast. The Board of Deans was also kind enough to offer Michael a full professorship upon hearing of his re recently discovered heritage and his plans to move into the estate. That's not how professorship works, but whatever. Ivory Tower, perhaps, but at least they take care of their own. Uh, there are numerous buildings surrounding this cobbled court, but the only one you're interested in is the library to the west, where Michael told you he'd be until he came back to the real estate agent's office to pick you up, which, incidentally, he has not yet done. Mm. Don't want to write any of this down. So Michael is our husband, Verlek is the name of the branch of Michael's family, who owned the mansion. Um, Miss Carton Uni. Mm. Name of Uni in Angkor Head. Uh. And I'm going to write these down just in case we, um, we talk to someone later on or something and we need uh, Topics. It's kind of good to have these keywords, I think. Mm. That's it, though, right? So, we want to go into the library, I guess. Library to the west. Libraries to the west. I know this is not very beautiful, but it serves the purpose. So, west. Library. Shadows roost thickly in the vault ceiling, and small green shaded desk lamps cast pools of warm radiance here and there on the library's dim interior. You pause a moment to let the hushed peacefulness of this place soak in. A welcome relief from the unsettling events of the day. An exit lies, lies east, and a small alcove to the north, north houses the circulation counter. Peering through the shadows, you spot your husband sitting at one of his reading desks, absorbed in some sort of weighty tome and clearly oblivious to the time. 
Um, so yeah, I guess we go and speak to him. <laughs>